This is Citadel de Moor in real life. We'll go into the castle in just a second here, but there's also the lower village area of the map as well. It's got over 40 turrets like this and three kilometers of wall. And alongside all the amazing history that's on the site, there's also a lot of creepy stuff like this. So normally there's an entrance just around that corner, but it's closed right now. But thankfully I found a secret way in. So if you're quiet, we can just sneak through here. Now, we can only spend 24 hours here, and to explain why, we're gonna have to go back in time for a second. Guys, I don't know if I'm about to make a massive mistake, so I think I've realized the location of the DLC 1 Black Ops 6 Zombies map, and there's one flight available from London this week, and it's today, later today. The time right now is 4 a.m. The flight is at midday. So it's in eight hours and there's literally one flight back this week and it's 24 hours after the first one lands. So I can only spend 24 hours there. So if I miss that flight back, like I miss the DLC launch. <laughs> That's a little scary, but at the same time, I'm so tempted. I'm gonna ask Twitter. Is this a stupid idea chat? The results are in and Twitter's telling me to go. Do it, no balls. Why not? Absolutely, do it. Learn the layout of the map early. I actually cannot believe I'm doing this. <laughs> oh God. Oh, is this stupid? Is this stupid? I don't know. <laughs> this is the time <laughs> making these decisions. At this time of night is probably not a good idea, but here we are. <laughs> The time is 10 a.m. I'm on the way to the airport, or I'm about to be. Train number one. This is Seven Sisters. This is a Victoria Line train to Walthamstow Central. landed and this airport is so small there's one gate it's just that i think this shuttle says show me your address so that's what i'm gonna do i hope for the best i'm gonna listen out for cite because i think i need to go to the cite and we're gonna see what is in the cite <laughs> i maybe have let's say like 50 words in my french vocabulary oui is one of them Merci. Uh, le ticket. That's another one. Uh, croissant. I'm starting to run out of words. <laughs> We're leaving. Goodbye, airport. There's something about going along the river here and like seeing the sun just like poking through the trees that's bringing back some memories that like I didn't know I had. It's really weird. It feels nice. Thick. It's gorgeous. I mean, like, can't argue with that. It's. <laughs> We're already there. We're already so close. It looks insane. It just went behind a tree. It was just there, like literally just there. Got a nice little London eye. Very nice. Wonderful stuff. It's very French, as you'd expect. Like the most stereotypical French street I've ever been on in my entire life, potentially. A little windy, narrow road. It's cute. This is the train station exit. Damn, look at that. So pretty. We are kind of going uphill, which is good, because that presumably means we're going from the lower town to the upper town, probably. The locals are going crazy, dude. This is not something I expected to be here. But I would never in a million years have guessed that this would be a stop on this bus. Like a carnival. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. I've just seen a sign for what that just was. It's a fete. Now I know. Oh, they have a massive demon Santa. Look at this thing. It looks possessed. I'm pretty sure we're about to cross the bridge. Put the bridge up. <laughs> we made it. We actually made it. It just is the map. It just 100 million percent is the map. <laughs> That's so sick, dude. Oh my god. And I get to go in it now. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I have to pay. We'll figure it out. We're going in. We're going in. 
just going in. It's right there. <laughs> yes, yes. This was the best spontaneous decision I've ever made. <laughs> Look, oh, I'm gonna go there in like five minutes. Let's go. Oh, graveyard here as well. Okay. Wow. Spooky. And just like that, the bus is leaving me. <laughs> I'm actually here. I can't believe it, dude. I cannot believe it. I also can't see it. It's so in the way right now. Dude, I mean, first we've got to check out this view here. Look at that. So that's the lower city. That's where I was just like 20 minutes ago. And because all that rain cloud is there, it looks like the fog is rolling in. It's literally the fog rolling in in front of my very eyes. Look. <laughs> so before I go inside, I figured I would walk along this little sort of side path that like curves around. I don't know if there's anywhere I'm like not allowed to go, but you can basically see what I assume is the moat of the Citadel. I'm definitely gonna have to figure out a way to like actually learn the history of this place. But look, like, the ground here is all carved out, and that's like a big trough. So I'm assuming that that was part of how they defended it back in back in there. It's really majestic. It's also weirdly a tiny bit smaller than I kind of expected. I just thought for some reason that it would be taller, but it's not really that tall. It's quite stout. I'm also really enjoying how empty it is. There is no one else on this path right now at all. It's literally just me and the castle. Like, could not ask for a better time. Check it out. Oh, oh my God, if we can get around the corner, we might be able to see some sunset. I love this, man. <laughs> this is so sick. Secret entrance. Love a secret entrance. Especially if there's Easter eggs behind it. Hi guys, this is your No Nonsense Guide to opening the secret entrance to Citadel Day Moor. Let's go. <laughs> Outer battlements in the medieval city are dangerous with risk of falling. It's strictly forbidden to access them. Wait, am I not meant to be here? Is this off limits? This feels like it's not off limits. Maybe it is though. Also, look at this. Oh, bro. Bro. <laughs> Grates actually go all the way down, so don't drop your phone. And then this is where I was a minute ago. Yeah, look at the castle from the side, dude. It looks just like out of a book, it doesn't look real. Now we continue around the ramparts here. Now the walls feel a little taller when you're up against them. Like, imagine I was trying to poke a hole in this thing, It'd be pretty difficult, right? Oh, door. Okay, down or up? What are we saying? Down or up? I'm thinking up. What's down there? Oh, whoa, well, that's a big drop. Okay, fair enough. That is a big drop. Oh, wait. There's these in Terminus. I'm so dead ass. These are in, there's like four of them in Terminus. And right now they don't do anything. But what if they do something now that we've got them here? This is 100% in Terminus. I don't know if this part of the structure is. Is that sewage? Maybe that's sewage. Maybe I'm just being an idiot. Wouldn't be the first time. I'm really curious as well. What are those? They look like they would hold big beams. Does that mean that this was a doorway before? And if it was, why has it been bricked up the way it has? I'm starting to get a lot more ominous as we go through the narrow little passageways like this. Electrical cabling's been put in. Very Citadel de Moor. Oh, it looks like the sewage thing I was looking at a minute ago. What if they're connected somehow? Easter egg. There's just a very narrow little gap 
that I could fire arrows through, I'm guessing, or maybe pour stuff. Maybe I'd pour it down onto the people below here. Oh, look, there's another one of those things. I swear they must mean something. It's like a this little corner, big DE energy. Oh, and there's a door there. I didn't even spot the door. Huh. This area's got scaffolding in it, which honestly is making it feel more like the zombies map because it feels like there's current activity. But I've just spotted this. So let's just sneak our way down here and see what's around the corner. Yeah, I think so far this is the best view of the uh, battlements, but... I'm starting to get hungry. I haven't eaten breakfast since I had four Weetabix this morning. Time to get in there, try and find somewhere to charge my phone, and try and find somewhere to stay as well. Haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> it's already like 6pm, so... Yeah, let's, let's solve that. Let, let, let's solve that Easter egg, shall we? I feel like I've just emerged from a coffin. Yeah. Please be open, please be open, please be open. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One level deeper. We're definitely gonna have to go investigate this tomorrow. Because I can tell it's like a really epic structure, but it's just too dark to actually appreciate it. Also, it's a bit creeped out, it's so empty. I've seen like two people. Deep breaths. <laughs> it's okay, my love. Yeah, it's very ominous. Walking paths like this on your own. Just the cold stone floor. And the sound of my voice, really. And the wind. I can really just constantly hear the wind. Still empty. Totally. Oh, that was, what was that? Oh, it was a bin. I was getting scared by a bin now. Totally empty. Wow. That's so pretty. Okay. Just walking up this. Oh. Scary. This street and this drain. There's so much. It sounds like it goes so far down. What was that noise? Something here? Yeah, it's still just so empty. Okay, I think I found somewhere perfect. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Light. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Let's go. You, bro, look at that. Well, you can't look at it, it's pitch black. I will absolutely wake up for sunrise and show you guys what this looks like at sunrise because I bet it is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, field report. I've eaten the only sustenance that I had, which was a pack of fruit pastels that was in my bag for about a year and a half. I've got to try and find food now. The problem is I'm in France and it's a Sunday. Any shop I come across is gonna be closed. <laughs> That's just the way it is. So I'm gonna really try and find a restaurant. I, I kind of wanted to just make my own food to be honest, but I'll try and find a restaurant. That means I have to brave speaking French. I'm not sponsored here, but I'm gonna just jump on Duolingo. <laughs> I figured I could go to the order food and drink section. Which one of these is the table? La table. La table. Ah, la table. Ah, excuse-moi. Uh, Un table pour moi, s'il vous plaît. The tea, the le le the <laughs> le the le thé. Oh le thé. Oh okay. Which one of these is the juice? Le, le juice. juice. Le jus. Le jus. 
Un jus d'orange. Un jus d'orange. I'm so ordering orange juice today. Je voudrais une pizza. What is je voudrais? Voudrais. I'd like, je voudrais. Whoa, that's a big one. That's like power word right there. I would like. I think I'm ready. I think I've got to be ready. I'm smashing it. No language barrier can get in the way of me. Okay, let's review the phrases I've learned. Un table pour moi. Un jus d'orange. Definitely going to get one of those. And then I'm just going to fumble my way through the rest. There should be a restaurant somewhere here. This restaurant closed. Uh, this restaurant very closed. It's really creepy, man. Like, it's just empty. It's so weird. I feel like I'm on a film set right now. I really thought there'd be tons of tourists everywhere. And I don't know if you can see, but there's just nobody anywhere. It's just creepy noises. <laughs> Another street that's just completely empty. I'm starting to feel like, I don't know, something's gonna happen. <laughs> it's just not a single person. What is this? Tapas? Yeah, I would do tapas. What's it called? La... La... La grotte? Something like that. I think open is ouvert. So I'm gonna say... Bonjour. Uh, bonne nuit. Bonjour. Uh, c'est ouvert or no? C'est ouvert or no? Uh. I don't know what that means. What is it? Uh, une personne? Une yeah. personne, Oh god, is this... Have I walked into a snail's restaurant? Oh my god. Oh my god. There's... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh god. Ah, uh... Uh, uh jus d'orange? Yes. Merci. My jus d'orange has come. Let's go, Pago. Let's go. It looks so good. The snails have arrived and I don't know how to eat them and I don't know how to ask. So if there's bits of this that I'm meant to avoid, I'm not going to avoid it. I'm just downing it, the whole thing. It's pretty good. I think it's one of those things where like, you just have to ignore the weird texture and just get in there. I am actually really proud of myself because that is a polished off plate of snails. They're all gone. The remaining oil is really good. He also in English just offered me water from the well. Apparently this is well water. I'm done and that was so good and they were so nice so this place Les Cargo I think it's called uh, highly recommend the thing that really impressed me with them was that they really didn't need to be that nice like I've been to so many restaurants in Europe where the staff are just sort of indifferent to the fact that you're there and for some reason in there they were just really really warm and yeah it was really good vibes so i'm gonna go for a little wonder seeing as i've had food now so i've sort of not got any what the hell is that <laughs> i really want to know if there's a way i can get in there or even better, in that. That would be so cool. Look, the like, light glowing in there, it just... It looks like there's a quest item in there that I need to pick up. And I don't know how to get in yet. Like, do I need to shop charge the door? Like, what's going on? There's like a big power cable. Wait, maybe that's where we turn the power on. Maybe it's through there. The grounds out here are lovely, but I have just noticed this gate. And 
it's so ominous. It's just a portal, an absolute portal into darkness. That way doesn't look any better, to be honest, so I feel like I'm in Dark Souls right now. anything right now so I'm going to turn back. I also didn't notice this earlier. What the f Oh wow. Oh, can we see through that? Oh look. It goes down so far. So just like this. See you tomorrow, torture. Okay, made it. <sighs> been a long day. It's been less than 24 hours since I even realized that this was the map location. This has all happened so fast, but I'm really happy with how today has gone. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm not gonna stream. I was gonna stream and like talk with chat and stuff and figure out where to investigate tomorrow, but I've actually got a really bad headache. So we'll see how tomorrow goes and I'll see you then. I've been up actually for a few hours, admittedly. I'm kind of cheating here because uh, I wanted to get up before the sunrise so I could get that time lapse for you guys, which I think turned out pretty cool. Uh, the fog has really rolled in. But actually, now that I'm looking, maybe it's cleared up a little bit more than I realized. It's fine, it's fine. It is cold out there though. I'm absolutely freezing. So let's get that closed. I think that the boulangerie is now open. So I'm gonna go and try and get some breakfast. I'm gonna try and order some breakfast en français. And then the day is our lemon. Like there is so much to do. The vessels for Maxis, the radios. What am I talking about? Also, I noticed this view. This is where I am right now. Isn't that freaking amazing? I also just wanna say, as I get dressed here and start my day, I really appreciate all the love that you guys have been showing me on social media recently. It's been absolutely amazing seeing so many positive tweets about this trip and like Dick Serto covered it. And there's just been, there's been so much, I don't know, just positivity on the timeline in a way that I'm not really used to seeing. Like I, I, I tweeted out this trip, right? I tweeted out saying like, oh, maybe I should go. And then I tweeted out being like, okay, I'm actually doing it, I'm on the flight. And then I tweeted once I got here, right? Like tweeted the image of me here. And the response was just so lovely. I don't know, man, I'm, gla I'm glazing you guys right now, but it's just been, it's been so nice. It's so wonderful to be in an era of the zombies community right now where we are basically all abundantly positive. It honestly brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> like, it makes me so happy, so. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just grateful for every single one of you. It's, oh, what a time to be alive, man. What a friggin' time. I need to charge my phone, but what a time to be alive. Okay, got the keys. Let's do this. This, this place does not feel real. It doesn't feel real and it's in a good way. It's, it's wonderful, but it's just barren. Now, as we head to the boulangerie, I want to show you this, which I tried to show you yesterday. I didn't, didn't actually realize you could walk up here. Uh, but it was just so dark that you couldn't see any of it. But look at this. This is like the, I think they call it the chateau. Uh, inside the castle here. And I think you can go in. I think you can pay to go in. So that might be something that I try and do a little later today after I've got breakfast. But this was the, the view where I was like, oh, it looks so cool, but it's too dark to see, right? It's this. There's a lot of sweet shops like this. 
That looks really good, actually. <laughs> right, stomach's getting the best of me. But yeah, Google Maps says there should be a boulangerie, like, right here somewhere. Bad news. Closed. I think Fermier is closed all Mondays and don't know what Mardi is. Another day of the week. My hunt continues, but I've just found another well. And these are starting to really be reminiscent of the well that we saw in the teaser picture. And in the distance, if we look through the well, look at that tower. It looks like friggin' Sauron's tower. <laughs> What's going on over there? There's so many places here where you're looking around, you're like, oh yeah, it looks really nice. And you just see it's like shackled up, chained up like that. And I'm like, what were they keeping in there? What were they trying to keep out? This is kind of getting crazy at this point. I've just not been able to find any breakfast anywhere. Let me, hold on, let me try and translate what I am looking for breakfast is, and then I could just try it on a random stranger. This says, je cherche un petit déjeuner. And do you have, looks like it's tu a, or c'est tu a. We'll figure it out. Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, uh, tu a, uh, a patisserie, a croissant, or no? No. Just gelato? <laughs> gelato, coffre, uh -huh. cookie, cake, uh -huh. coffee. Uh, un uh, uh, crepe. Curry? Parfait. The parfait? Parfait? Oui, parfait. Yes. Oui. Okay. I thought I ordered a crepe. I don't think I've actually got a waffle. Let's go. This is really good. This is cream. Chantilly cream, it's so tasty. Made a good effort. For what? Merci. That scared the hell out of me, look. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Terrifying. Yeah, let's do this. Parfait. Merci. Alors, uh, one ticket to museum. Okay. First museum. Okay. Alors, guard the ticket to visit partout. Okay, great. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Haha. Let's investigate. This creepy dude. What are you reading there, Is that Richmond's diary? What, 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 what are we doing? I have no idea if you can see that guy. He's just standing there. He doesn't really look tortured. He's just sort of hanging out. <gasps> it says, here begins the scenes of prisons. Total isolation with little food until died. Okay, the translation's not amazing. The prisons were destroyed. They don't exist anymore. They were situated against the bottom of the medieval city. Ooh. The town cries of the Middle Ages show that in reality, any profession of speech, like being a YouTuber, in an illiterate society, you guys are getting called out there, confers considerable influence. Ah, it mobilized the attention of the population, sometimes bringing news of prime importance for the life of the city or for everyone's finances. That's so interesting. You just being able to relay information in that way meant that you were really powerful. That's something I never thought about before. Robbers' coffins were a daily spectacle until the 18th century. That was considered an everyday punishment. That's crazy. Like, that's just being normal. Just hanging out in a cage in the town square. You were in the stocks, standing up and displayed in the public square for three days and three nights. That's a long time to be in one of these things. <sighs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, this guy's having a bad time. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. It's okay. It's gonna, it's gonna be okay. Did you just have a dinner? Oh. Oh, I see. Okay. I've got to say, their dead expressions is really just not comfortable at all. <laughs> really not comfortable. There's a second museum, which is the Musée de l'Inquisition. Bonjour. Okay, so I wasn't allowed to record inside, but this museum, compared to the other one, this one's like really grotesque. This? Like, bro. Why were people doing this? The executioners would only stop when the convict was cut completely in half. Ugh. It's insane that historically these sorts of things just happened. Like this sort of thing, by comparison, is, is just chill. Like this is a little cage where you'd get locked in the cage, your legs would go there, and then you'd like have stuff thrown at you, I guess. Which is just 
it's so not deep. <laughs> a classic, a French classic right here, was first used in France in 1792. Being beheaded was a death reserved exclusively for nobles and pupils of importance. Oh, kind of a luxury then turned up in one of those. Convicts were decapitated by the guillotine up until 1977? Th that 1977 in the... What the hell? This is about to be me in Citadel de Moore. That's gonna be me with that sword. That's gonna be a zombie just hanging out, ready to get cut up, dude. Oh, hello. Le Cap de Vron. The condemned was installed inside a barrel and subjected to public condemnation. It's not that bad. Oh, the barrel would be filled with rotten water, urine, and manure. And then the offender was enclosed inside. Oh, sorry about that, bud. Ooh. This one's crazy. They just put you on a wheel and then just break your limbs. And look at the crowd. But that's the thing that is really the most surprising, I think, about all of these is that people just watched this. Like, this was just fun. What was wrong with humanity? <laughs> Okay, with that done, I do want to take some pictures today because I need a thumbnail for this video. So we're going to go do that now, then we're going to explore the town a bit more, and then I'll try and get into the castle. And I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use this to like be my tripod because I just didn't bring a tripod with me because I'm a very organized YouTuber. It's the issue with solo traveling to a remote destination where nobody is, is it's hard to get a good picture of you just cheesing, you know what I mean? Like a little bit of... Little bit of that. I cannot believe this. This town is empty and I've still been robbed. <laughs> I put my portable charger on the side and then I went up the steps because I was like, oh, I should go charge my phone inside, foolishly. Um, and I turned around and it's gone. I was literally gone for like 30 seconds. I ran back, it was gone. How is someone stealing a portable charger in an empty castle? <laughs> what the hell, man? I got really lucky, to be honest, because I had the charger stolen, but I didn't have this cable stolen. This is my only charger cable, and my phone was on 4%. So if I didn't have this charge, I also wouldn't have been able to buy a new cable because my phone is dead. So I would have been I would have been toast if this cable was with it. But luckily, the cable was still in my pocket. That's being a tourist, I guess. It sucks, but at the same time, I'm only here for 24 hours. It is what it is. So I'm not gonna let it sort of ruin the moment, I don't think. I'm just gonna sort of keep going. Uh, so I wanna check out that massive gate that I saw yesterday that I just didn't look at because I was too busy like roaming around here. Uh, so let's head over there now first. I think this is that massive entrance and it's so imposing. It's so cool. This is what it looks like outside and it's so different during the day. Like you can really see just the scale Excuse of- me. Hi. Are you Merlo? I'm Milo, yes. Uh, oh, great Milo. Okay. I will show you something inside. I'm local. Okay. You cool. will discover the city with me, okay? Okay, yeah, sure. Let's go. Let's together. do it. Yeah. So what is what is this? This is the most important medieval town in Europe. Okay. Citadel de Moor. Amazing. And with me, the local guy, you will discover all the wonders here. Sounds perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, let's do it. We have 2,600 years of history. Wow. Situated below, there is a river uh -huh. called Old. To the north, yeah. it's cloudy, but this is the Black Mountain. And to the south, it's impossible to see them, but uh -huh. here it is. Okay. Who we'll lived here first? Is it the Romans? Not yet. No, not yet. Okay, before the Romans. Before the Romans. A Celtic tribe uh, decided to build here a first village. It was an Opidu. An Opidu means a village with a wooden fortification. Okay. Okay. Maybe you know the French comics, Asterix and yes, the Village. Yeah, so. I love I love them. Yeah. <laughs> well, for example, they were living in this kind of village. Oh, okay. okay. She has the Lady Carcass. Oh, okay. The legend said that she was a Muslim princess and she was the owner of this place during the 9th century after Christ. But unfortunately for her, the city was besieged since five long years by Charlemagne. Of course, during a long siege, five years long, some problems appeared. With the people's, was it starving? Was yeah, like, food shortage. Food shortage, yeah. yeah. So she decided to make an inventory inside in order to know the reserves. But unfortunately, people gave to her just a little pig. So she had a long reflection and then she decided to feed the pig with the wheat. Okay. In order to have a fat pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With her fat pig, she went at the top of the highest tower of the fortress and she shot the pig oh. on Charles the Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so weird, no, because she wasted the last pig and the wheat. Yeah. But when Charles the Great saw that, what did he say to your mind? 
What was his reaction? Sacre bleu! <laughs> Sacre bleu, yeah, you're right. <laughs> He said something like, I don't understand well because I'm here since five long years besieging this place and now my enemies are using food as projectiles. Yeah. What does it mean? Uh, inside it's plenty of food and for me impossible to take this city. Yeah. So totally desperate, he left oh. with his army. Oh, so she bluffed. Yeah, and exactly. He believed the bluff. Yeah. Wow, okay. And for the Lady Carcass, it was a victory. Yeah. So she wanted to show her victory to, to everyone inside. She went in the church and she rang the bells. And that's why a knight said to Charlemagne, in French of course, Charles Carcass son. Oh. Carcass is ringing you, you know, in oh, English. Okay. But in French, yeah. the translation is Carcassonne. But I'm so sorry, it's just a legend. <laughs> <laughs> no! It's not true at all. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the Lady Carcass never existed. Oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the bridge in fortresses, you can find a moat with water. Dry one. Yeah, I noticed that yesterday. Yeah. I was surprised. And it was dry too during the Middle Ages. Okay. Because the river is below. How to bring the water during the Middle Ages, uh, I mean. Yeah. From the river to the city yeah, at this yeah. time. With buckets. So uh, how many buckets do <laughs> yeah. we need? To too many buckets for this. This gate is called Narbonnes. Narbonnes. Because we are orientated towards Narbonne city. It's okay. a town at the east, more or less 60 kilometers far from here. During the Middle Ages, this gate was the most important one too, because it was the unique one for the carts. Oh. In order to develop the trade inside. So yeah. it was the economical passage of this city. So the gate is the two twin towers and the little building between the towers. First of all, as you can see, it's really high. Yeah. 25 meters. Second point, for the shape, the two towers are not really round. It's something called a tower with a beak. Oh, okay. With architecture. Yeah. So the beak during the Middle Ages permitted to deflect the projectiles. Oh. Shot by trebuchets or what? Oh, okay. And so this this is the beak, the, yeah, yeah. the sort of beak squeezed yeah. part there and there. In the foundation, in the basement, the beak is four meters thick. Oh, okay. So really hard to practice the right. to, to destroy it with yeah. the battering ram. And it was also a way to fight against the undermining. The okay. undermining is when the enemies are digging oh. under something. And the bumpy structure like that appeared in architecture during the late 13th century. So we know that this gate was built in 1280. Okay. But this is not the oldest remind of this place. Okay, so um, that uh, kind of dates this specific yeah, gate. You thanks to this tell kind thanks of to architecture. That. Wow, okay, exactly. that's cool. And what are the, the slices? The narrow openings are called in English. Harrow slits. Harrow slits, okay. But in French, mm. the word is meurtrière. Meurtrière. Okay. Meurtrière means murdered windows. Okay. It's maybe more violent in French. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that also at the bottom? Would they ever, like, pour things down? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. So, like, like, like hot liquid yeah. or something like that? Hot, li hot liquids, we will see that, but not hot. Double ramparts. You can see two walls. Yes, yeah. So, this one, the, the second one, the largest one is one kilometer, 700 meters long, and the first one, one kilometer, 300 meters long. On these walls, you will find 48 towers, four gates, and four barbicane. The barbicane is this kind of construction. Oh, okay. It's, barbicane. Yeah. A semi semicircular wall, uh -huh. okay, with crenellation and with a part for the soldiers. Okay, is the crenellation the top? Yeah, the, the, this, this bit here? Okay. We are between the two walls. It's a place called the Lists. 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 Lists in French. That the same. Uh -huh. So, in Carcassonne, the list, it's really the place between the two ramparts. But sometimes, in the fortresses, you will find just one fortification, not two. Mm. So the list will be the place between the wall and the wall. Oh, okay. And during the Middle Ages, nobody lived, nobody lived in the lists. So, if this place was not a place to live really, to your mind, what was the function of the lists during the Middle Ages and during peaceful times? Farming? Good idea. But, uh, <laughs> but no. But no. <laughs> Justice. Oh. And okay. the tournaments yeah. between knights. There's a lot of mixed around everywhere. It's yeah. like quite sort of spotty, like one area will look like one style, another area is a yeah. totally different yeah. style. Now let's talk one more time about the tower. These towers are like, you know, an horseshoe. 
uh -huh. because they are rounded out walls. But in world, they are flat to uh -huh. save in the city, to save the space for the population. Oh, okay. Second point, it's less high. Uh, here it's only 14 meters. Okay, and it was 25 20, like that? 25 yeah. for the Narbonnes Gate, so it's lower. No harasslets, but only the harshest openings. Yeah. They permitted to the soldiers to shoot a pilum. The pilum is a big spear. Pilum, okay. Two meters long. Uh -huh. So really hard to shoot a pilum by an harasslet. I never tried. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can see the brick. Yeah, they're like strips of, yeah. strips of brick. Yeah, and the bricks are like a seal. To stabilize. Oh, okay. You know? So, as I said, these towers are older than the Narbonne's Gate, only yeah. taken from Bart, built during the 13th century. Yeah. But the question is when these towers were built? These towers were built during the antique, more or less 17 centuries ago. Yeah, there's like a. Is it water drainage? Yeah. But in France, at this time, it was uh, some imp important rules to respect oh. in the society. So if you are poor, you have to walk there. If you are rich, you can walk Ah, uh, okay. The highest part and cleanest part. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. It was a way to show your social status. Oh. And uh, from this street, it's also mm. perfect to see the flat aspect of the Gallo-Roman Yeah. Here, this is the big well, the deeper one in... 42 meters deep. 42 meters, okay. Yeah. And it was built during the second part of the 13th century. Okay. After a terrible conflict called the Crusade against the Cathars. During this conflict, the feudal lord of Carcassonne, the Vicom, lost the city because of a water shortage. Okay. And so this was built after that? Yeah. Oh, okay. And, of course, there is a lot of legends about this well. Mm -hmm. A legend is saying that in this well you can find the physical treasure. Oh, that's what's it. down there. Okay, yeah. I was wondering. I walked past this the other day. There's treasure down there, is there? Hmm. Oh, okay. the Cathar treasure. Okay. About the physical treasure, there is another legend. Maybe this treasure was hidden in the Alaric mountain. So that's why a lot of people are hiking in the Alaric mountain. Oh, they're trying to find it. Okay, I'll have, have to come back. I'll have yeah. to come back. <laughs> so this is the castle. Yeah. This castle was built in two periods. Okay. It's like, in reality, two different castles. Oh. The first one, for the shape, was like a new. Mm. All this part did not exist. Okay. okay? And the, the building inside were lower than nowadays. Okay. okay? Uh, and this first castle was built during the 12th century by the Trincavel family. But after this terrible conflict, the crusade against the Cathars, all the Occitanie became French. Okay. Because before it was not a French territory. Oh. Okay. It was like an independent one, yeah. living with different lords, the wow. Count of Toulouse. Just here? Yeah. Right, right. like the, the Languedoc region? Yeah, Languedoc yeah. region, Occitania right. region. Yeah. And all these feudal lords were vassals of the Aragon King, okay. part of Spain nowadays. Okay. But the Aragon King were not really present here, so okay. they were independent, more or less. And then, after the crusade during the 13th century, yeah. I will explain, we became French. Uh -huh. And the French king established here a seneschal, that is to say a man from his royal organization. Mm -hmm. And the seneschals transformed totally the castle. What kind of projectiles were used mm. during the Middle Ages? What was shot, what was thrown down on the enemies? Okay, my, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about Age of Empires here, video game. <laughs> yeah. um, did they ever, this, this could be completely wrong, did they ever catapult yep. cows? Catapult cows? Cows, yeah. No. Okay, because I heard, I heard that um, cows with, at some point, I think, like, cows you, with Ah, uh, you know, poison animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for yeah. example, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, okay. But not cows. But not for this. Okay, no, no, no. cows. Okay. You, you remember, in Carcassonne, only pigs. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> what else? Uh, so, spears, arrows, okay, and spears, uh, yeah. hot water sometimes. Sometimes in the movies you can see uh, burning oil, but as right. I said... It's not true, yeah. because it was too expensive, but there is a confusion between oil and something else called tar mm. or peach. Yeah. Uh, tar during the Middle Ages was hot resin from pine trees, okay. you know, and it's more interesting than oil. Yeah, because oil stick to you. Sticks. Yeah, okay, yeah. When is the end of the medieval period? Like, when, like, cannons would have been installed? Is that... So, 
Uh, the cannons were used at the really, really uh, end of the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. during the second uh, part of the 14th century. Okay, okay, yeah, but, I was just curious about that uh, as, a, as a method of defense, yeah. uh, but it sounds like that's but a bit at later. at the beginning, when they used cannons, mm. with the powder, it was really dangerous, a lot of accidents, so oh. the, the, the technique with the, the, the right and perfect technique with the cannons yeah. was mainly during the 16th and 17th century. Oh, okay. With less than. Yeah. So here, mm. this building is the house of the Inquisition. Oh, okay. Do you know what is the Inquisition? Religious police. You're going to have to help me out here. So they worked yeah. with the Pope? Yeah, and the French King. And the French King, yeah. okay. So the Inquisition was established in the Languedoc in order to fight against the Cathars. Okay. The Cathars were the enemies of the Pope. Yeah. More, and, more the, and the Cathars at that time, correct me if I'm wrong, but they were trying to sort of go back to the older form of Christianity. Excellent. Excellent. And then the Pope was going towards the new, like more reformed version of Christianity. Yeah. And so less. it was like a battle between yeah. old and new Christianity, kind of. Uh, it's mainly because of money, but... Uh, okay, okay. Oh, you're right, too. Just something about the, the, the roofs. Yeah. You can see these black slate roofs. Yeah. This is not typical in the south of France. Okay. Uh, here we are using ties, like the Romans. Yeah. All the roofs with black slate were recreated during the restoration. And when Violet de Duc restore, uh, restored Carcassonne, he decided to restore it with its royal aspect. Okay. That is to say, like Carcassonne, like, like the citadel was after the crusade against the Cathars. Mm. And that's why you can find a northern architecture here. Oh. Because after the crusade, the French kings wanted to show their domination here. Yeah. So they used their language, they used their architecture, they used their, their way of oh, life. Okay. And that's why you can find these black slate roofs. So to sum up quickly, mm. quickly, the first population was settled here during the 6th century BC. 6th century BC, okay. They built a little village, an opidum, with a wooden fortification. Yep. After the Celts, the Romans. With the Romans, everything was okay, without disturbs. This is the Pax Romana, the Roman peace. Mm. That's the, like 400 years yeah, of more or less. peace. Wow, okay. The Romans did a good job, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> In order to be protected from this barbarians and mainly from the Visigoths, yeah. The Gallo Roman built the first rampart, but unfortunately it was not enough. And now I will try to explain what was the Catharism because it's something important in yeah. our region. So the Cathars or the Albigensians did the same thing because some Cathars live in the city of Albi, okay, were Christians, but they did not respect the rules of this church, that is to say the Pope one, the mm -hmm. Roman one. They were Christians, but with an idea of dualism, mm. that is to say, to their, to their mind, you will find two different worlds yeah. with, with two different gods. The good world, the sky, the eternity, of course created by God, so the spiritual world is accessible, this is the sky, eh? yeah. only after the physical death. Okay. And this world, the human one, the material one, was created by Satan, oh. and this is the bad one. Oh, okay. In order to access to this eternity, you need to be pure. If you are not pure enough, you can't go to heaven. Right. But you are al already living in hell. Right. So what is going on after your, after your death? Yeah. What do you... What if do you, you can't go... Yeah. For example, at yeah. this time, for the Christians faithful to the Pope, mm. after your death, three possibilities for yourself. Mm. Heaven, purgatory, oh. hell. For the Cathars, the purgatory did not exist. Okay. It's to their mind, an invention of the Pope. Yeah. So only hell here yeah. or heaven. But you are not able to go to heaven because you are not pure enough. Yeah, so you are... are you reincarnated in hell? Yeah. Right, exactly. okay. In the Catharism, you will find this idea of reincarnation. Right. But, you know, it's not like in the Buddhism, for example, because in the Buddhism, the reincarnation, it's in order to have a new chance. Yeah. Here, it's with the Cathars, it's mainly, it's like, to suffer it's like one more time. Like, yeah. yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. And um, so the, the crusade against the Cathars began in 1209. Okay. But before to talk about that, just something else. Yeah. Uh, mainly the crusades during the Middle Ages, mm. the first, the second, the third, the eighth, yeah. were in Jerusalem for in 
Middle East mm -hmm. between Christians and Muslims, mm -hmm. in order to take the the like Holy Land, yeah, right? Like exactly, Egypt. yeah, exactly. Yeah. This crusade, it's something totally different. Right. It's two kind of Christianism. Yeah. In a Christian country, mm. Christian territory. Yeah. So that's why some historians are saying that. It's not really a crusade, it's more a civil war. Mm, okay. Interesting, okay. Yeah, because when I think of crusade, I think yeah. of like people traveling together and then yeah. the long yeah. travel, the yeah. like really long journey, yeah. right? And like yeah. having to walk all that way. Yeah. Um, whereas I guess this was yeah. next door. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's why your, your I made the precision, because it's different. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So this crusade against the Cathars began in 1209 in Béziers. After the crusade, yeah. In order to be protected from from the Aragon's attacks and then the Spanish attacks, yeah. the French king built the second rampart, oh. the Narbonnese Gate. Right. They closed the castle and yeah. they created eighteen wells and cisterns. Right. So it was like against. well, yeah. stabilize the yeah. the de defenses and then make it so that the siege itself couldn't possibly exactly. happen again because yeah. they have enough wells to sustain. Yeah. When the French king became the new owner of Caracasson. He wanted to show his domination, so he destroyed right. the tri the transept and the choir. Okay. A Romanesque to build two other one in the Gothic style. Yeah, okay. Because in France, the the Gothic is really the royal style. Okay. That's why uh, close to Paris or in Paris too, in the region called Ile de France, yeah. you can find all these Gothic places yeah. because this is the first territory of the French king. Right, okay. Wow. This time, who was able to read? The clergy right. yeah. and the nobility. Yes. Men, mainly. Yeah. But for the others, craftsmen, merchants, fa farmers, yeah. how to learn the Bible? The priest was using Latin. Oh, and okay. And people spoke Occitan, yeah. Languedoc. Yeah, yeah. The true way to learn the Bible was the pictures. Oh. The observation of the pictures. So the stained glass windows, the sculpture, the yeah. paintings. This is the Bible for the people. Right. Wow. And nowadays for, for us, it's abstract because we are all able to read books yeah. when we are not able to read, read that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But during the Middle Ages, it was the contrary. Yeah. Do you know how to read them? Uh, a window? No. <laughs> Come with me. Okay, for example, with this yeah. one. Uh -huh. In order to read a um, vertical stained glass window, it's mm. always like a comics book. Okay. But always from the bottom up. Oh, okay. Because you are in the human world yeah. and you will travel to God, to the sky. Wow, okay. okay. Yeah. So, okay, on so your on the left, left and right hand side, yeah. uh, this is the, the prophets of the Old Testament. Okay. Something classical in the Christian iconography. Uh -huh. But for the, the, the middle, it's interesting too because this is the tree of GC. Okay. The tree of GC is like the family tree of Jesus. Can you see in the middle the first character in green and brown? Yeah. You can read maybe his name. Yeah. GC. Second character in red with a harp. Yeah. It's David. Okay. Right. After David, you can see his own son, son oh. Solomon. Then his own son. Yeah. His own son, sorry. Robert. So it's kind of the family tree yeah. going, Ex going up and up. Okay. Etc. Etc. Until the top. A man with the arm totally open yep. in green. Jesus. Is G okay, so it's... Jesus. Yeah, and then Mary and Joseph, yeah. I assume. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Jesus in green, of course. Right, the okay. Above them, you can see other characters, yeah. but with wings. So they're angels. In order to evoke the right. divinity of this family. So now with my technique and some knowledge in the Bible, you can read the medieval comics. Yeah, wow, <laughs> that's amazing, thank you. For a rose window, it's easier because the main subject is in the middle. So you oh. will read them from the middle. And then to... outwards. Yeah. Okay, so it was the Basilica. Last thing I wanted to show you. Goodbye. Okay, uh, that, that's it? That's, she's going. Okay, well, I feel like I really have sort of an understanding of why it is the way it is now, which is really nice. Checking out the actual castle itself inside the keep walls is definitely something that I want to try and do. That's super cool. Got my ticket. I'm so glad we made it. I was so worried that we weren't gonna manage to get in, uh, but here we are. Let's go explore. This is the keep.
That's what it looks like. Not sure what those are. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect there to be this kind of courtyard area. I think this is going to get us access to the ramparts so we can actually see over everything. <sighs> There's quite a lot of stairs. Hey, dude. Nice to see you. This is cool, right? Like, this is cool. I don't know why they just have a room with a 3D rendering of everything that I've already been walking around and seeing, but it feels like quite a nice sort of acknowledgement of how far I've come, to be honest. <laughs> Feeling, uh, Quite pleased with this little animation. It's nice. It's wholesome. Now let's check out this area, shall we? Oh, this whole courtyard is cool as well. I guess we can go down there in a minute, but just looking at the view. Wow, that's so sick. That is so cool. Oh, dude, and with this in the distance there, that is so awesome. Look at that. Quite the drop but <laughs> worth it for the view. Wow. I want to go up there so bad. Oh, wow. That's where I came in. I'm in one of the towers, which is really cool, but you really don't realize it <laughs> as you're going between them. But like, that's what I'm about to go to. I've been seeing these things this whole time on the horizon, but I just haven't actually been going in. Then you've got this little walkway and that leads to the next one. Look, it's like outside the map. It's like a view that the devs didn't intend for you to see. <laughs> oh, look at this as well. <laughs> so narrow. No overtaking here, that's for sure. I think this is going to lead out onto the ramparts though. Man, the view is so good. Wow. I guess this is the benefit of having a castle. <laughs> as you can just see everything. This is a cool room. The mural. Whoa, look at this. Wait, we're going up? Oh my god. Oh. oh, I'm leaving the castle. Oh, hell yeah. I've wanted to do this since I got here, man. Let's go. Cool. I thought this was off limits for so long. There's the castle behind me. <laughs> yes, I get to walk around the whole thing, dude. Oh, nearly tripped over there. Oh, look at this. It's such a narrow little path. Isn't that just perfect? That looks absolutely amazing. It's also wild that like, I'm on the ramparts right now, right? Like I'm still up here, but this is also just someone's backyard. Like what a life that must be. Can you imagine being in a little window like this and using the moat just there to fire arrows down at your enemies and keep yourself safe? Like this really feels like a strong and defensible position here. I can really see why that moat was so powerful and effective. And I hate to be that guy, but look at these people's garden. Isn't that pretty? With the statues, that looks like an Easter egg step right there. That really looks like an Easter egg step. Top marks. What is this? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reverse out of that. Cannons. One, two. Now for more stairs. What a weird structure that is, don't you think? I love how it's just this massive stretch down this side as well. Imagining armies preparing to defend, and that's the main gate. And look at this view of the cemetery here as well. No glass, like the UK could never. And so opposite it there, you then got the castle on the other side and this little clearing with a chair randomly in the middle. Bit weird, I doubt that's gonna be in the map. <laughs> that is so cool. Wow, I was in that. Being up here as well really makes this feel like a video game map. Just having the bird's eye view of everything is a vibe. Oh look, there's another well. Didn't spot that one before. Wait, do they have an amphitheater here? What's the, what's that? Wow. Nice. Very nice. So this is the amphitheater area. Oh, Le Grand Théâtre. Open air theater in 1908. Okay, so this is kind of the newest part of the castle. I had no idea this was here though. That's so wild. And it's wild as well that this is just in the castle ramparts. Like this isn't down in the town. It so easily could be, but they just decided to put it like on the corner of the castle. <laughs> I love that. I think that's, that's so cool. Oh, there's even a little room with a terrifying box in it. And now we're heading back towards the castle. And of course, gift shop. <laughs> it would be rude to go somewhere like this and not get myself a gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> now, as I head out of the castle here, I just wanted to say thank you for all your lovely support on this little adventure I've been on. It's so appreciated. It's your support that makes goofy ideas like this possible. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's just the best, the fact that you guys have my back the way you do, it's amazing. Uh, and if you'd like to see me explore more zombies maps in real life, this video is on my channel. I don't know where it came from, but it's there. So maybe check that out. Enjoy.